<laughs> All right. I just hit record. Hi there, guys. We decided to jump on tonight. Our team's having a little happy hour, and we were like, let's go ahead and talk about our objections and the things that held us back in the beginning from getting started with this business or like just the crap that we were telling ourselves that we believe to be true and why we couldn't succeed at this business. And so now we're sitting here and some people may jump on this call still guys while we're recording it for you because that's just how our team rolls and they may not. But at the same time, every single person on this team call has achieved diamond or above in their business. Um, many have created incomes for themselves that are part-time to full-time incomes in this business. And I think the coolest thing about it is that we all have different jobs. We all come from different walks of life and we all have different things that held us back in the beginning. But chances are it's still the same crap that you're probably telling yourself right now, even having scrolled through everything that you've already listened to and being excited about this. And if you've gotten this far, chances are you're probably you know interested. So um, I will just say the thing that I thought that would hold me back the most is that I thought you had to be super salesy to do this. I thought it was like other multi-level marketing businesses where I was out there like chasing people down and like, you know, constantly trying to sell, 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 sell to friends and family. And they didn't want to hear about what I was doing. And I was going to be like annoying girl that like, if you saw me in the grocery store, you'd turn around and like walk the other way. Cause you're like, Oh no, she's going to ask me to buy something. And I didn't want to be that person. But what I realized is that it sold itself because I was the product. That's not about selling beach body products it's not about you know posting about a trainer or posting about a product it's really just sharing my own journey and through that people start to see me and see themselves in me and what it's doing for me and it sells itself so that was like the biggest thing for me um that and that I wasn't fit but I'm sure you guys also have that as well like anybody else can relate to the like I'm not fit enough thing yeah so um, maybe somebody actually wants to like dive into that and talk about it. But I know like with like the, the sharing thing, like Katie, I know that was like a big thing for you because you thought that you were like, she calls herself an introvert, you guys. And so does Mariah on this call. So does Meg. And I just think that like, they're not at all, <laughs> but, but they are. And just shows you that like an extrovert introvert doesn't matter. It can do good business. But Katie, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. So I'm super shy, but mostly to people that I don't know, or in situations where I feel uncomfortable in the sense of like my full-time job, I work in finance, and any time that I have to give presentations at work or things like that, I literally <laughs> like almost vomit every time, um, and so that's kind of what I thought this was going to be like is, you know, if I have to talk or I have to like reach out to people, I thought, you know, I'm very shy that I, I didn't want to constantly be feeling like I was going to upchuck because um, of that of that nervousness. But what I realized is it's very different going and presenting financials to people when it's something that I'm not passionate about or it's something that I have to kind of learn and then share. Whereas coaching from day one has always just been, you're just sharing your journey and you're just connecting with other women. And it's not like Joan said, it's not salesy. You're not trying to get people to like buy something. You're truly just leading with your heart and sharing your journey. And, you know, and we have a ton of onboarding training too that helps with that. Because at first I was like, I'm just one of those lurky people on social media, just liking other people's stuff. I don't like to post, but there's a ton of training that helps you with that. And once you get started, I know Mariah does this, says this too, but it's like an outlet. Like you just authentically start sharing and connecting with other women and, yeah, that's, I think that's so fun. Like, honestly, cause like I can attest for this, we run quarterly events and there's been times where it's last minute. Cause it's kind of how we roll. <laughs> I mean, us, our team, most people probably plan way in advance, but we're like, we got this, but I'll be like, Oh yeah. By the way, Katie, want to get up and talk right now? And she'll be like, okay. And she'll jump on stage and I'm like, see, I called bull. But at the same time, I have seen her freaking out about a presentation at work, messaging me saying, Oh my God, I can't believe I have to do this in an hour. And so that's so real. But because you love this, it just flows out of you because it's something that you do. You don't have to think about mm -hmm. that like something you are. 
Right. And the added like emphasis on personal development has been huge too, because I remember right after I signed up, I was like, I can't do this. I don't have the confidence. I messaged Joan. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm like not cut out for this. And she was like, listen, get on a zoom with me right now and recommended a bunch of PD books that completely changed everything. So not even just with the business and with coaching, but like my entire life. So that's another cool thing is the emphasis that it has on like personal and self self growth too. I mean, it's crazy because like you literally almost quit and now like you're one of the top earners on the team and yes, you still have your other job, but like you're earning enough that you could be full time. Yeah. That's <laughs> what else we got guys? What else held you back? Um, well, I was just going to say that I can definitely relate to the introvert. You know, it just takes a lot of energy for me to put myself out there and to meet new people. And I'm not a small talk person. And so I was literally just posting for accountability. It was what I needed. Um, and I kind of was like tunnel vision. Like I wasn't thinking about other people seeing me. And then they started coming to me and like, well, what are you doing? Um, I actually didn't have a ton of objections. I don't know if I just like was blindly like hopped right in. I was like, yeah, I mean, it's holding me accountable. I love how I'm feeling right now after three weeks, like the difference was insane. So yeah, sure. I guess. I don't know what it was, what came over me. I'm glad that it did, but my objections kind of like, I don't even call them objections. They're more like kind of fears or doubts crept in. Like as I got started, I was like, okay, now what did I get myself into? Like, I actually have to talk to people. Um, but again, what I found from feeling so good and just like wanting to create this community of support and like not having a lot of close friends growing up and like really craving that connection, especially as a mom of two littles who was working full-time nights. Like I didn't have a lot of chance to get out and meet people. Our town has 700 people and there's like no restaurants. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that I could create that for myself and find like work with who I wanted to work with was just like a huge thing for me. So that's how I kind of got over that was. Let me ask you this too, because I know you're one of the people on the team who I feel like, um, this is a common thing that happens all the time when I'm talking to people, they're like, let me ask my husband about it. And then their husband like, doesn't want them to do this business. Like, and I really feel like it's not because their husband doesn't love them. <laughs> it's not because, of them not supporting their spouse or anything like that. And honestly, I don't even think it's a financial reason. I think it's fear and they think that they're like protecting you because they just, they don't know what it is and they, they haven't, you know, met anybody that's successful with it or things like that. But I know that was a big thing for you in the beginning is that Matt, her husband wasn't um, super supportive at first. So can you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. At first it, he was like, okay, she's getting healthy. She's happier. That's great. But then when I actually started coaching, it takes a little bit of your time and you know, don't ask me why, but in the evening when you're watching TV together, if I wasn't like laser focused on him, which I wasn't anyway, like if I was on my phone, it was an issue. And like, you know, he had taken a back seat to the kids. He had, you know, takes a back seat to work sometimes. And and so it was just one more thing, I think. So he was craving that attention. And I wasn't being a good communicator about why I was doing this, how it was making me feel, the wins of my challengers, and like what, our, what my vision for us was, and like involving him in the decisions and stuff like that. You're right. I don't think it wasn't a financial, you know, thing for him either. I think sometimes, though, it is like fear based. Like, yeah. oh my God, you're just going to quit your job and, and then we might be financially in trouble or judgment based. Like, what are people going to think if my wife's one of those ones that's being salesy or what, you know, like it just, there's so many layers to it. You just have to communicate and tell, you know, involve them in everything. So guys, just so you know, like she literally left Matt after he basically told her like, you can't do this business. I don't want you doing this business. And if you do, we're over and was like, peace out. I'm going to an event. And she came to a retreat. I didn't leave him, leave him. But no, I, I know. But you came to a retreat that, you know, we held at like this mansion that we rented out on the beach in Destin so we could all hang out together and showed up not knowing a single soul there. Katie is her coach. They had met that night, like morning at like 3 a.m. to get on a flight. And she came anyway and like <laughs> cried during the vacation because of it, things like that. But when she got home, recognized how she could even help 
incorporate him more into the team and that's changed everything and now he's best friends with you know us and and everyone and and completely supports her and actually has calls with her team to help them like make more money and things like that so it's insane like the 180 but I just think it's so cool because I was Matt I was the person who didn't want Ryan doing it and it was mostly for me like he's talking to people I don't know and connecting with people I don't know he's spending time at night when he could be hanging out with me on the couch like it was weird stupid crap but he never forced me he just showed me like what he was doing that was it who else wants to share what's another objection go for it Renee Okay, so one of my big objections was that I had already done um, Pampered Chef. I had done Leah Sophia, and it was awesome when everybody was like so excited. I want that. I want this product, whatever. And then it just like fizzled. So I was very skeptical to jump into coaching because I was like, it's just going to be another one of those. And I just don't have time for it. I don't want this. It's just going to be a headache for me. And I don't have time with it. You know, I've got three kids. We're busy and I'm, I work full time. But Mariah did not give up on me at all. And I will tell you, I have never had such a community that we have within Beachbody that helps one another. Like we have fun, like look at us, we're here having <laughs> and <laughs> doing this together. Like this is like the best part about it. And you're, you don't have to do this on your own. Like we navigate through this together as a group and that was like the best thing. And it's nothing like what I experienced with like Pamper Chef or Leah Sophia. Like it's not selling at all, you are, you know, proof of the product. And it's freaking fun. <laughs> like I didn't realize you could have so much fun and I didn't realize I was going to make so many friends as I have. And I didn't realize I was going to actually get to go on some of these trips and like just we were in Haiti together. I have the cutest pineapple picture of us. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just gross. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great picture. I mean, that was one of the best selfies I've ever taken. So <laughs> anyways, but it's just, it's just crazy because I'm just so glad that she never gave up on me and just like showed me, this is what we can do for Beachbody and what you're going to experience with the community. It's like a team effort. Yeah. So it's just nothing like anything I've ever done before. So I think that's awesome. And such a great point. Like it's really easy to share about something when you're feeling good. And that's what yeah. this whole thing is about is helping you feel good. Like when you're working on yourself first and foremost, that's where you get the confidence. That's where you get the like ability to be a better speaker, a better coach, a better leader, a better influencer, a better, you know, mom, sibling, whatever. And sharing that becomes something that you just want to do because you want other people to feel that good. So I think that's an incredible point. I can also feed off that one too, where yeah. I have done something like this before, where in reality, I honestly have not done anything like this before because I have tried selling shakes. I've tried doing a tea or something that could help you lose weight. But in fact, it was nothing like this because it's so much more than just that. Um, and like you said, the personal development, the getting together, none of that was a part of the atmosphere that I was before, which quickly made me realize that that wasn't something that I wanted to be a part of. And that's what keeps me pushing forward with this business. I love that. Yeah, I'll feed off that too, because I got this question the other day about somebody who had briefly coached like a, a few years ago. And she's like, oh, I posted like a couple times about my fitness journey. And now she's worried about being like imposter syndrome of like her not being like the fitness expert or the nutrition expert. And I'm like, see, that's not, that's not it at all. We're, we're coaches. We're not fitness experts or trainers. We're not nutrition specialists. We're human. And yeah. that's what's relatable. We all go through different seasons in our life, life changes. And if you take a step back, you take a step back. But what I've learned about coaching is, is when you lean into those hard times, when you lean into this community, when you lean in to those hard workouts that it's really hard to get up that day, it can change your life. So don't worry about being an imposter because we're coaches. We're just human beings. Like we're not supposed to be special. 
And so you're being hard on yourself thinking that you can't like go into this again, but really what does that show you somebody else? Like you're doing this because you went back to it because you are passionate about it. Like you're still thinking about it three years later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, the, that's like, I have coaches who've come back, like coaches who've tried the business and then said, no, not for me. Message me and say, holy shit. Like life is different without mm -hmm. that support and without that positivity and without these workouts. And like, I need back in. I mean, Kelsey on our team is one of them. Um, so, I mean, that's like, <laughs> I was going to say Katie Casey. <laughs> I just signed up like five times. <laughs> like, um, but it's true. It's like addictive and it makes you feel good. And I think that, that that other bigger point there is that it isn't about having the perfect body. It isn't about having abs. It isn't about being a fitness or nutrition expert. It's about being on your journey. And we partner with a company that gives us amazing tools that we can use to help other people. We have nutritionists, we have nutrition programs, we have workouts. Our job is to connect people with those and to cheer them on through it and to support them when maybe things aren't perfect and maybe they aren't feeling their best. And it works in reverse too. I know that like, ha geez, like if I wasn't a coach, I'm like, I would be so fat. Like I would be fat, depressed, miserable. And I mean, I know fat's like a terrible word we shouldn't use these days, but like, I would be, I would be overweight, depressed, sick, and miserable, probably divorced, like, because this helps me stay true to what I truly want as well. I think my biggest objection, um, when it came to coaching, um, and people have kind of touched on it here and there, but ultimately mine was, there's no freaking way that I have time for this. Mm. There's no way that, you know, I can fit you know, another job on top of my already busy schedule. You know, I am a full-time family law attorney. Already being an attorney is a full-time job over a full-time job. And then you add the family law aspect, like family law never rests. Like there's constantly issues going on that, you know, I need to be available for. And so I'm like, how in the heck can I fit something else into my schedule along with, you know, trying to make sure I'm making time for my spouse. And I'm trying to also make sure that I'm putting the time in for me every single day. And then also I'm adding on this, um, and you know, what I found was that it, it's completely up to me when I want to work, when I want to do this, when do I want to you know, carve out a half hour here before my workout or after my workout while I'm sitting there just drinking my recover, sitting on the couch, yeah. um, you know, when I come home at night, um, and we're just hanging out, watching TV, you know, taking a few minutes there. Um, it's completely up to me when I want to work and I absolutely love everybody jumping on and saying, okay, we're going to work for a little while. You know, I really feed off of that energy. Um, and we do this like all the time and I love it. Yeah. Like you don't have to be alone. Like you guys, we even do workouts together. We have zoom calls in the morning. People can jump on and do workouts together. Like all throughout the day, people on this team will post like, I'm jumping on to do some work for a little bit. Does anybody want to come work with me? which just, it adds to the fun. It makes it more social, but it also kind of gives you those cojones to like, be like, all right, I'm going to invite right now. Cause they're inviting. And we talk to each other about like, well, who are you inviting? How are you inviting? Like, what's your message that you're saying? Like, how do we respond to this? So all that training is there for you too, that maybe you're nervous. Like, Oh, I don't know how to run a business. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to invite. I don't know who to talk to. Like all of that is there for you or even how to post and, and things of that nature. Um, but I think Jess, your point about time, like, do you guys want to talk about that just for like a second? Cause I do know it's like a hot one. Like, I don't know, Becca, how many kids do you have? And like, what do you do for a living? <laughs> yeah. So time, time in my uh, day is not a thing that I can ever find. So like this morning I was up at five and that's the time that I get my workout in. And I had thought about trading that time out for some coach work, but when it comes down to it for me to feel my best, I have to work out at that time. So then I'm quickly jumping into work. So I watch 12 kids a day on top of my four. So, uh, free time. And it is four kids and she's watching 12 kids in her daycare. Like that is a lot. <laughs> yeah. And that was my biggest excuse when I first started out. I absolutely have no time. I have no free time. Even if I do get a break, there's no way that I'm going to fill it with time for coaching. But as I started to get feel better and be more excited about this, I can't wait for a break to chat with some of my ladies or to invite somebody new um, yesterday during rest time instead of 
there's things that I can be doing, but I've learned that there's things that I can put off because this fulfills my time so much better. It's something I look forward to. And not only is it a paycheck, but it's just something that gives me so much more joy than things that I used to be anxious about. Yeah, you can start looking at it like, is this bringing me closer to the life that I want or further away from it? And I'll tell you, every time I ask myself that question, I'm like, yeah, this rerun of like, how I met your mother is not getting me where I want to go. <laughs> like before, I would just like panic clean my house and just clean and clean and clean. And I mean, to the point that it wasn't healthy. And now I'm just like, it's okay. Like, this is so enjoyable. And I don't think I found something before this that I could fill my time with. Yeah, it's amazing. And then Katie, Katie is still working full time and a new mom. Do you want to just tell your background? Yeah, so I am still working full time. <laughs> Six years later for some reason. Um, but so, I mean, some seasons during budget season when things are crazy, it can be upwards of like 60 hours a week. And <laughs> then this year was the first time adding a baby into the mix. So that was so crazy. But just like Becca said, I think when you have something that you're so passionate about and especially like with this community and just knowing that that next person that you reach out to could be the next Becca, could be the next Mariah and you could help them like with their anxiety or with their marriage or that's just always stuff that I keep in the front of my mind is like, if I'm too tired and I'm like, ah, you know, I've had a busy day. I'm like, okay, who out there needs me on my A game today? Who needs that message? Who needs me, um, you know, to work my business tonight? And even if I'm just like, you know what? I'm spent, it's 10 o'clock and I'm just logging out of work. I barely get to see my baby today. I'm going to, I'm going to send 10 messages and then I'm going to close my phone and then I'm going to go to bed. Um, just because that for me is one, going to move my business forward, but two, um, it's giving those ladies the opportunity, um, of a lifetime that's completely changed my life. So I now look at it as my responsibility and my obligation, um, because I, it's changed my life so much. Like I can't just sit on something like that. I know Mariah has definitely some time constraints too, and it's something that she can add to, but I'm going to wait because I want her to kind of wrap it up as we wrap up here. Um, you guys, I think that like one of the last objections that we'll talk about is money. And I can just tell you that if your objection is that you can't, if you can't afford $160 to not just get in the best shape, best, best health of your life and surround yourself with like a supportive community like this, then that is your reason that you need to do this. You can't afford not to do this because the finances in this alone will change your life. And I I know that you've gone through this page and you've seen the income progressions and you've seen what's possible. And I just want you to remind yourself that that wasn't their circumstances when they got started. And everybody comes from a place of, you know, oh my God, Shakeology seems expensive or, oh my God, like that challenge pack is coming out of like potentially my grocery money this week or my gas money this week or whatever that might be. But what you put in, you're going to get back 10 hundred fold. Like it's, it's insane, this opportunity and what it can provide for you. So just to wrap up, because I know we all had these objections and these crazy ass thoughts, limiting beliefs, blocks telling us we couldn't do this business or why it wasn't for us and why it was great for other people, but not us. Um, I want you guys to share with me just why you're so glad you got over that objection because the biggest thing it's done for you. Like how has Beachbody changed your life? You can go in any order you want to, or I can call you up. I'll go. Um, I, when we were talking about not having time and I was thinking of back to working full-time nights, every day that when I go on my Facebook, I see those memories do and they don't know. What? What do you do for work? They don't oh, know. Oh, sorry. I'm a nursing supervisor, but I work night shift. And uh, so every day when I go on my Facebook memories, there's at least one memory status that says like, can't wait for my one day off this week. Um, you know, can't wait for a weekend with my boys because I was working every other weekend, every other holiday, night times, my husband was putting the kids to bed and I hated, like cried all the time about missing that stuff with them. I was at work Googling work from home nursing jobs. They all seemed super boring and unful unfulfilling. I was not excited about them whatsoever. I even changed jobs for a while, just searching for that thing that was going to like let me have this life that I had envisioned for my family and be able to prioritize my boys like I wanted to. 
Um, and so I realized like, although I had no time, I was working overtime, taking care of two little kids as a zombie at home, I couldn't afford to not do this. Like I couldn't afford to not make the time in my day. They weren't huge behaviors at first. It was a few little pockets of time throughout my day. It was maybe five messages. It was maybe adding three people to my circle. And I just consistently showed up and did that every single day. And now, you know, two years into coaching, I was able to take a big step back from my full-time job and just work per diem. And now I found joy in that job again, because I want to, I only, I literally only go to work because I want to, and I love it and I enjoy it. Um, and that has made like a huge difference in my life. So that's what it's done for me. Jess, go. Oh, sorry. Renee, were you going to go? I know my mouth's like, (laughs) (laughs) go for it. (laughs) So there's like so many things that I can, you know, talk about that make me, makes me just want to just do Beachbody forever. But like the biggest thing for me, I think is like, I jumped out of my comfort zone and it made me love working out again because I did not love it. And my kids seeing me doing it and now they do it. So it's just showing my family like good behaviors and good habits and all of that kind of thing. And they just jump in and do it with me, which is my absolute favorite. So they just see this as a good routine, healthy routine now. And they just, they love it. And they do it. <laughs> we get craziness behind us, which I love. I the little goobers run behind Becca. <laughs> <laughs> So really, that's like one of the biggest things for me. So I love that. Meg or Jess, whoever wants to go next. You've already called me out once, so. (laughs) You love calling on me. (laughs) Um, You know, I think of two things right away. You know, the first thing being I have made probably my best friends doing this, even just for (laughs) I have made my best friends even in just (laughs) just such a short period I only started coaching in November of 2019 Um, and so I have made like friends that are going to last a lifetime just doing this for such a short period Um, and I never thought that I could do this Um, and then the other thing that comes to mind is my partner Um, my partner has um she has a lot of medical diagnoses. She has lupus, pleurisy, um, rheumatoid arthritis, and Raynaud's disease all at the same time that she battles just constantly. Um, and there are days where she's doing really well. And then there are days when she's not doing really well. Um, and it's really hard for me, you know, being a family law attorney, which I love doing, but being an attorney and have to be away from her when she's having such bad days. And I can't be there to, you know, help her, whatever it is. Um, And so, you know, my hope with doing this, and I'm I'm getting closer every single day, my hope with doing this is to be able to, you know, be a lawyer because I want to be, but also be able to be here when when she needs me. (laughs) Big stuff. (laughs) Who's next? Aka. (laughs) <laughs> there's so much I could share but I don't want to be a stopping mess so I'm just gonna think of keep it simple of um when I first started coaching I was just out of gr- grad school I had just got my first job and I remember me and my husband were so excited to like go to the bank and be like oh, let's get a house like we were just so naive and they like looked at us and they're like your debt to income ratio, like, you guys have a while, <laughs> like, you're not getting out anytime soon, we're like, what? And so, you know, and I remember, like, a couple years would go by, and we'd go back all excited just for them to be like, guys, like, I'm talking, it's gonna be a while. And so, um, I just remember at the time, like, doing out the math, because I am a finance major, so, like, doing out the math and looking at all this stuff, and I'm like, we're not going to get a house for 10 plus years at, if we continue on our career path the way that we're going and at the rate that we'll actually be able to pay down this debt. We're never, ever going to be able to get a house. And so I started coaching in 2014 um, and we got our house in 2017. So three years into coaching and being able to pay that. I mean, we completely paid off all of our credit cards. Um, we were able to, you know, just... I've been able to pay down some of my student loans and just 
really just build our income and stuff too. So that right there is, um, you know, probably the biggest thing was we are in our house right now. We just completely redid our basement with cash. Um, didn't have to take out any loans or anything. Um, and if anybody knows me, I'm a super homebody. So that's just been the biggest blessing. And now we get to raise our son here. And so that's been pretty great for us. <laughs> Amazing. Meg? Well, just like Katie, there's like a laundry list of things that a coaching has done for me. But um, I mean, we've traveled, we've I've met some of my best friends. Um, I've gotten the best shape of my life. Um, but for me, um, you know, I did the normal, right? I went, I went to college, I graduated. I still didn't quite know exactly what I wanted to do, but I was in marketing. I landed a job in TV. And for 13 years, it felt like I was just working so hard to get up that ladder, like to just keep going and then get to the, a, a bigger TV station and then climb the ladder again. And I think the big shift for me was when I started coaching, I started to gain more confidence to go for these promotions. And then slowly it started like this community in this company that we partner with. There was also changes at my corporate job that I didn't necessarily like, like the culture was all changing. So for me, it just opened my eyes to what if I like went all in or what if I sacrifice and instead of watching TV at night, I like work my business or instead of um, I was in like lots of different sports leagues. So what if I cut out like one or two of those per week and work my business and slowly like that just gave me the option to be able to go full time because I worked I worked it right and then like I wanted to work it and then that motivation of seeing the the change um, at my corporate job and I was like I, this is no longer serving me and thank god I had this to like fall back on because I don't know where I would be right now I would probably be miserable <laughs> so yes coaching has done a lot for me <laughs> Becca I have um, quite a few things that it's done for me, but my most favorite is um, getting rid of my anxiety. After I had my first child, my anxiety pretty much, I, ha I had no anxiety. I was probably the most outgoing, happy person, carefree, never worried about anything. And then I had my son and hormonal anxiety took over me. And when I went on medication, I became somebody that um, I never thought that I would be. I, um, and with that, I gained a bunch of weight. Um, so with coaching, just staying consistent, showing up not only for myself, but for everybody else that I've signed up and promised that I would be there for them. I have gotten rid of my anxiety completely. I'm off medication and I feel the best that I truly ever have. Um, and with that, just finding, um, the belief in myself that I can do anything really. So that's my favorite. Yeah. And I would say for me, um, that belief is, is huge. Like that, that just makes me think of mine, but like, I think that from a really young age, I just knew that I wanted to do something that provided me freedom. Like I, I didn't want to go to school. Like I didn't want to wake up to an alarm clock. I didn't want to continue that the rest of my life. And I watched my parents, like specifically my dad worked so, so hard all the time up and out of the house by 5am back in the driveway at six, then would be working on the house in the yard all day. And then like, you know, I don't know, just seeing my parents argue about money and, and all that stuff. Like I just didn't want to live that way. And I'd seen other people, my grandfather specifically live a completely different life, owning businesses and having that freedom because of finances. And I was like, what do I do <laughs> like to get there? Like, how do I get that? Like, that's what I want. But I just never knew what that was. And I think that what the coolest part about this is, is like a simple need to just feel better like after my dad had passed and my depression and all of that, like a simple need to feel better led me to figure out like what my passion was, which was helping other people. And by helping other people, I created a life beyond like what I could ever imagine, but also not just the hope, like hope's there too, that's cool. But like the belief that anything is freaking possible for me in this and I'm running towards whatever I want. And like, I have exactly what I need to get there right now. And some really awesome people to do it with me <laughs> and so like I think for me that's it it's provided me 
abundance, freedom, community, like pretty much anything that they tell you gives you longevity in your life and happiness, like Beachbody has provided for me. And I'm like eternally grateful that this fell into my lap. So um, definitely glad I got over myself. <laughs> So I don't know, guys, that's all we really wanted to share with you tonight was just that we had similar objections. We're all normal humans. We all go through the same things or different things. But, you know, at the end of the day, we all have limiting beliefs, blocks, things that we don't like or struggles in our life. But that doesn't mean that our life has to stay that way, that we can always work together. And I feel like if you help enough people get what they want, you can have whatever you want. And the cool part is, is that's exactly what this business is about. It's not about being perfect. It's like work on yourself first. Other people notice you get to help them. And then not only do you get to help them feel awesome with their health and fitness, but you get to help them change their lives. And to know that like each woman, like that's on this call, like I had a teeny, teeny, tiny piece in their success just by signing up to do this myself first. Like that's priceless. So, um, hope you sign up. Keep going. Talk to the coach who added you in here.